Good afternoon and welcome to Shaw Academic Advising's Virtual Open House Week. We are excited to start off this week's panel um, with our um, political science faculty chair, as well as Kitsia Macias, a Shaw Academic Advisor from our advising department. Um, my name is Amandeep Singh. I am the Student Engagement Coordinator for the Shaw Academic Advising Office, um, as well as an Academic Advisor um, for the Anthropology, Management, and Business Economics and Economics students. Um, I will be your moder moderator for today's panel, um, but before we begin, just a few Zoom guidelines for you all. Um, please make sure to keep yourselves muted um, as well as your video off today. Um, we are recording today's session just so that you are aware. Um, for any questions that you have throughout um, the panel, please feel free to use the chat function below um, at the bottom of your screen in order to type out your question, and I will um, voice those questions aloud to our panelists today. Um, so with that being said, we'll go ahead and get started, and I would like to go ahead and have um, Professor go ahead and introduce yourself, and then we'll have Kitsia introduce herself as well. Great. Thanks. Hi, I'm Jessica Trounstein. I'm the chair of the political science department. I um, have been here at UC Merced for 12 years now. Um, I was the fourth political scientist hired here at Merced, so I've seen a lot of changes over time. Um, I study local politics um, in the United States, and I teach classes on um, research design and statistical inference. I teach local politics and I teach the introduction to American politics class um, for our undergraduate students. Um, sometimes I teach in the honors sequence and every now and again I, I teach random other classes. But I'm excited to see you all here and I'm happy to um, tell you about our program and um, all the opportunities that you have before you today. Hi everyone, my name is Kitsia Macias. I'm the academic advisor in Shaw. So I academically advise students in the political science degree programs, as well as in the st for students um, in the sociology degree programs. So now I'm passing it back to Amandeep. Awesome, thank you. And just as I mentioned, um, if you have questions along the way of your own, please feel free to use the chat function to message those questions to me and I'd be happy to ask them on your behalf. Um, first question, um, Professor, can you just tell us a little bit more about your department um, and political science um, in terms of what are some of the courses that you teach um, and some of the good academic behaviors that you think that students should have to be successful in your courses? Sure. Um, so you, um, any, any question that has to do with, political, with, with politics is something that political scientists study. So why did Gavin Newsom get recalled? Or why do people choose the political party that they do? Or why do we have two parties instead of more parties? Or will um, this infrastructure bill that is before Congress pass? Or why don't democracies typically go to war? So anything that you are um, interested in in the political world, um, even if it's even sort of a little bit related to politics or policy or government or anything that happens in the political world, that's what political scientists study. So we study, um, sort of broadly speaking, um, the causes and consequences of things that happen in the political world. And in our program, our students focus in three uh, or four different areas. We have American politics, comparative politics, international relations, and then a law and public policy um, emphasis within, within our major. Uh, and we teach classes in all of those different areas. So one of the strong um, unifying features about the political science department here at UC Merced is that we are very interested in teaching our students um, some um, data skills in addition to teaching them about politics and about the political world around them. So we have um, basically only two required courses that all of our students take. They take a, a class on um, an introduction to American politics and then they all take a class on statistical research design and statistical inference. And that's the class that I teach. I'm teaching it this semester. It's a lot of fun. Um, it's called Understanding Political Controversy. And sometimes when students hear the word statistics, they get anxious, um, but it's not. It's not It's not something that should make you anxious. It's really the way that we learn about the world. and. Um, if you want to make change in the world, if you are a person who thinks to yourself, you know what, I don't like that our schools aren't funded equally in all places in California, or you think to yourself, I wonder, you know, why Gavin Newsom did get recalled. In order to answer those kinds of questions, you have to learn a little bit of statistics. 
And so th that's one of the unifying features of, of our political science department. Another important sort of way that we think about ourselves here um, is that we are, a, we are in very flexible program. So what we want is for you to be able to design a major that interests you. So you can decide if you wanna focus on American politics or comparative politics or law and policy or international relations, whatever combination of those um, subfields that you wanna focus on, you have to pick two um, at least, but you can design the major that is interesting to you. And that allows us to teach the classes that we love to teach in lots of different areas. Um, and it allows our students to pursue uh, the kinds of puzzles and questions that um, that are exciting for them. Thank you for elaborating on that. Um, going off that question a little bit, um, I had, if you can just talk a little bit about wh what it takes to be successful in some of the courses that you teach and just in general when it comes to courses in political science. Sure, yeah, I forgot that one. You did ask that before. Um, so in general, you know, political science is, um, it's a, it's a, discipline where we are teaching you how to think analytically, right? So we're, we're, we teach you uh, how to look at the world around you and analyze the world around you. So some of the skills that you need are to be a good watcher, a good observer of the world around you, and then to be a good questioner. When you see, when you read something in the newspaper or in any of the classes that you're in, the first question that we are hoping that you'll ask is, I wonder why that happened. And I wonder what else might have happened, right? Those are the kinds of skills that we want our students to bring to the classroom and to their lives in general. But more specifically to, to really do well in political science classes, it helps to focus on your writing, to be, a, um, to, to, to be able to write in a way that is clear and convincing and persuasive, not about your opinion, but about what, the, what you're seeing in your reading and how you're analyzing what you're reading. And then to be able to make connections between the different things that you're reading. And sometimes super exciting students always tell me that this is but sort of really great for them when they can see connections even across their classes, not even just within the same class. So those are some important skills. It is important, you know, all students, this is true for, for any major, it doesn't matter if you're a political scientist or whatever, but we all are busy. Every, all of you are so busy. You have so many things going on in your lives. You have so many um, places to put your attention. And some of those places to put your attention are frustrating and hard and uh, overwhelming. And some of those places to put your attention are super fun, right? Like hanging out with your friends. So one of the things that makes for a successful college student is to make sure that you are conscious about how you are allocating your time and to prioritize, right? You shouldn't study for your midterm that is three weeks away if you have a midterm that is tomorrow. You need to study for the midterm tomorrow first, right? So learning how to or arrange your time to strategize how you're approaching your classes. And something that I find super helpful, particularly for freshmen, is just to write down what you have to do, right? So make a calendar for yourself, make a list of things to do, make sure that you bring the books that you need with you if you're coming to campus all day, and that you don't have to sort of sit there doing nothing and sitting there doing nothing's nice too. But if you have a free time in your day to be able to do one of, you know, read one of the articles that you need to read per class and make sure that if you have the ability to, to be able to write, you know, notes on what you're reading, to be able to, you can type notes. I like to write notes in my little PDF. I make a little comment box and I, and I say things that, that occur to me. And sometimes it can be really helpful if you can make connections between what you're reading and what the professor has said or what one of your TAs has said. So all of these different ways to make sure that you're actually incorporating the knowledge that you that we're trying to convey. And then I'd say the most important thing of all, make sure you get help when you need it. And sometimes it's even hard to know that you need help, right? And so trying to gauge how you're understanding and checking in with yourself. Am I really getting what this reading is trying to convey to me? There is a lot of reading. College is a lot of reading. It's hard. And it's way more reading than there was in high school, right? And so there can be, there's a transition period of sort of learning how to, to be good at all of these things, but getting help when you need it is really important. Thank you for that. Um, 
So next question, um, can you talk a little bit about your research interests and how can students do research in your major? Well, not in your major, but in the major that you teach for. Yeah, so I, as I said in my introduction, I study local politics in the United States. So um, I write a lot about things like segregation and the election of mayors, which sound like they're totally different things, but they're actually really related because segregation happens in cities and so does the election of mayors. So I study things that happen like super local in the United States. Um, and I always have undergraduate research assistants working with me. I have a couple in my urban, pol in my urban policy lab right now. We're working on a big project um, where we're associated, uh, where we're working with the Association of Bay Area Governments to try to help cities in the Bay Area um, understand their own histories of segregation and then how they can plan for new housing going forward and taking into account the processes of segregation. Um, so that's a, you know, only one example of lots of different kinds of work that I do at the local level. Um, now that I'm chair, I don't get to do as much research as I wish I did, but all of the faculty in political science do are very active researchers. So there are, there are some professors out there in the universe who don't really do any research anymore. That is not true. The political science faculty, the political science faculty are really all invested in our research all the time and every single person in the political science faculty has worked with undergraduates has had research assistance um, from undergraduates and there are a couple different ways that you can that you can do that that you can sort of engage in research opportunities one is like if you take a class with somebody and you really like them and you did well in the class just tell them hey i would like to do some research with you i'm i'm available i'm interested in in the things that you study Another, and so, you know, you can, you can just tell your professors that you're interested in that. Oh, and I should have said some of our, our graduate students also have worked with undergraduate students as well. So if you have a TA who you really like or are they're doing some research that you're really interested in, I have seen collaborations between graduate students and undergraduate students as well. Um, so just reaching out is, is one way from a classroom perspective, but we also, we have, um, so, the political science department has a, a lab that we share. It's called the PS lab, the political science lab, where we do experimental research. And we have a graduate student who runs our PS lab, but then we have a whole bunch of undergraduates who help us to run the lab. And so that's another way to get involved in research. You can reach out to our lab manager um, this year, who is Jung Chen, and say, hey, I want to participate. I want to, I'm, I'm interested. Here's my availability. Um, and so some of these positions come with pay, Most, many of them don't, um, but sometimes when you work for a professor, you can get paid for that work. More often we give research credit, so we give units um, for the research that you've conducted. And there's a couple of different ways to get research credits. One is to do your own research, right? So we oversee the research that you're doing. Sometimes that can, you know, produce a publication for you or, so, or turn into something like an application for a graduate program or something like that. Um, I'd say the more common thing is that students do research that we're doing, right? So the professor is already engaged in a research project and we bring in our undergraduates to help us with those research projects. And I have had undergraduates do really, really terribly boring things for me and really, really, really interesting things, right? So like sometimes I need to know what is the gender and race and ethnicity of all the city councils in California. So I need you to go look at all the pictures of every elected official in California and take a, you know, to screenshot of that picture and then tell me what the, what you think the, the gender and race and ethnicity of that person is. And then we have multiple students do that and we try to compare against the different students' um, conclusions that they've drawn. So those are, you know, that's the kind of stuff that my, my research assistants do, but there's different things for all the professors. And can you talk a little bit about some of the benefits that students gain from doing research? Yeah, absolutely. So one of the clear benefits, I'd say the most instrumental benefit is that that person, if you've, if you've worked with that professor and you've done good work with them, they're gonna be super excited to write you a letter of recommendation, 
right? And they're going to be excited to write you a letter of recommendation for graduate school or for getting a job, or there'll be a reference for you when somebody calls, right? So that's it, creating a connection with a professor is a very valuable thing to do. But actually, the research itself is very valuable, right? So that's why we do it. This is why we are political science professors, is because the things that we think, the things we study are important. And so you have an opportunity to produce new knowledge, to produce actual results. So I, for instance, this, this um, collaboration that I have with the Association of Bay Area Governments, the students that are helping me do this are actually gonna change the way that the Bay Area plans for housing for the next 30 years. Like that's crazy. They get to say, they get to help these cities say where they're gonna put new apartment complexes, right? That's really important. It's, it's a fundamental, fundamental need for society, the kinds of research that we produce. You can also sometimes gain um, a publication from doing that research. And if you are interested in going into a field where publications are recognized, then that's a very valuable thing to have on your resume is a, is a publication. And I have published research with my undergraduates, um, both here and at my previous institution. Um, so that's, that's another reason. But also you gain super important skills. You gain skills on time management. You can gain skills on search, sort of search skills and data entry skills and even data analysis skills. So I have had students who have worked for me who have learned new computer programming in order to be able to help me do my data analysis. Um, those kinds of things are extremely important as you go off and have careers and be successful, you know, people after after you graduate from UC Merced. Thank you. Um, just a follow up question to that. Can you talk a little bit about um, what is the difference between research and an internship? Oh, they're very different. So they're not, they're not, they're, they're, they're not even really related. So um, an internship is, so, so, so research is the production of new knowledge. That's what research is, right? So you are helping a professor or doing your own production of new knowledge. Like what is a puzzle that we have in the political world? How can I find an answer to that? And research is the process of figuring out an answer to a puzzle. And political science research looks like gathering data, analyzing data, developing theories and arguments about how we think the political world works, comparing the data that we've gathered to the theory that we've developed, and then writing up an analysis. Did it come out the way I think it did? Right? So that is the sort of basic process of research in political science. And so there's data analysis, data gathering, theory writing, theory building, research design, and then writing are sort of the main skills that you would engage in as, uh, as somebody doing research. An internship is basically um, a position that you are given or that you that you earn um, that allows you to to work in some sort of organization a government organization a nonprofit organization a local law office where you learn what that job is like really so you 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 are doing the work um, sometimes it's paid sometimes it's not paid of somebody in that office essentially so the political science program we actually this is very exciting just last week we learned that we are going to be able to launch this enormous internship program um, for the campus, for the UC Merced campus. So we're starting a new center called the Center for Analytic Political Engagement. And through this center, all UC Merced students will have the opportunity to apply to be CAPE, that's our acronym, to be CAPE interns and CAPE fellows. And there's so many opportunities that are associated with being a CAPE intern or a CAPE fellow. You get to do skill building workshops, you get summer employment options, you, and, and you get to have research options with professors, and then you get to do an internship. And our internship options are here locally. We'll have internship opportunities to say, work at the city manager's office here in Merced. You, are you interested in local government? Maybe you wanna go and find out what it's like to work in the local government. Maybe you're interested in lo the local school system. Maybe you're really interested in how um, people make, the school boards make rules for teachers, right? So you could be an intern with the school district. I've had interns work with the Fresno County Office of Education. We also have interns who go to Washington, D.C., 
and we have interns who go to Sacramento. Um, and being a CAPE intern or a CAPE fellow, we have these two different programs that we're going to be developing, um, will offer lots of sort of monetary support for your internships as well as uh, support for a, you'll have a community of students who are also participating in our internship programs. And then once you come back from your internship, you have even more opportunities to, again, work for political science professors as CAPE um, research assistants, and then hopefully go off and into the world and be and, and get jobs doing things that you love that our internship program has helped you to achieve. Thank you for sharing that. Um, Kind of a follow up to that, can you talk a little bit more about some of the types of careers that you see students going into when it comes to political science? Sure. So political science um, generally builds skills that are valued by basically every employer. So it can be a great major for, for anything. If you're interested in politics, it doesn't, you know, that it's, it's a great foundation. Our major is a great foundation for whatever it is that you want to do. But in earning a political science degree, you're going to learn to think analytically, you're going to learn to conduct research, you're going to learn to communicate effectively. These are all skills that you'll use in any career that you choose. But we often see our students go on to work for nonprofit organizations. We have many students who go off and work in governmental organizations. We have students who have gone off to work as reporters, um, uh, you know, uh, doing things in print media and in digital media. We have had students go and work in think tanks where they're continuing to do research. Um, and we have many students who go to get graduate degrees, either at law school or in political science graduate school. Um, if you're interested in public policy, the political science program is a great foundation for getting, say, a master's in public policy. Um, but you can go and get many careers directly after being uh, an undergrad here at UC Merced. We're actually this year hopefully launching a new uh, minor in data science and policy evaluation. So that would offer you sort of the, the training in a, in a package to be able to go work for maybe a social media organization or another data analytics firm. Um, there's lots of them here in California. So we have had graduate students and undergraduate students go off and work for places like Google and Facebook doing analysis of, of data because of the kinds of emphasis that we have here in, in our political science program. And another follow up to that, can you talk a little bit about how can students or undergraduates today uh, prepare themselves if they're considering to go into graduate school? So um, the best thing that you can do if you're an undergraduate who is interested in going to, to graduate school um, first is have a conversation with a professor about what going to graduate school in political science looks like, um, because it's totally it, it's not like anything that you may have imagined before right being a political science professor is is different than being a political science undergraduate I mean, that's not surprising to you but when i went to graduate school i had no idea what i was doing like absolutely no idea i thought oh i like political science this is fun i'm going to go to graduate school so i can keep doing political science and then i got there and i realized oh it's very different it's very different um so the first thing you should do is have a longer conversation with somebody about what it means to be a political science professor most political science graduate programs are training people to be professors. Sometimes they are training people to be professors or data analysts. Um, our program does both things. We train people to be professors in research jobs. We train people to be professors in teaching jobs like at a community college, and we train people to be um, good data analysts. And so we have had people go off and get jobs in all three of those kinds of fields. Um, as an undergraduate, though, if you've already decided that you're interested in, in getting, you know, in, in going on to, to get a degree, a, a PhD in political science, don't get a master's degree in political science. Don't do that. That's it's not, not a good idea. <laughs> you can come and talk to me in my office hours if you want to know more about why. The, the short answer is anything that you could do with a master's degree in political science, you could also do with a BA in political science. And a master's degree in political science is going to be expensive. And I, it's, not, it's not clear to me that that's a good use of your time or your money getting a PhD in political science, that is a good use of your time. It's you don't doesn't cost money to get a PhD in political science. For the most part, the program that you apply to, they pay you, they pay you to be a teaching assistant and they give you, um, they give you their, your tuition is typically covered as well. That's how it is here at UC Merced. But I keep interrupting myself. What you need to do is do the honors program here at UC Merced. So we have an honors program in political science, where you take poly 10, 
poly 175 and then you write a senior honors thesis um, and that is an incredible preparation for graduate school and and for understanding what you need to do in order to go to graduate school so as i've said before a couple of times our program here at uc merced is quantitatively focused we spend a lot of time emphasizing research design and data analysis um, and that's what graduate school is really all about and so you want to take advantage of all the different offerings that we have here in in political science to do that but writing an honors thesis is a terrific way to to get on that path awesome so next question you talked a little bit about your experience as an undergrad um, and trying to decide on what you wanted to major in. Um, can you talk a little bit about and give our students some um, advice about um, how they can better prepare themselves for life after graduating UC Merced? So, you know, one of the things that you wanna think about as an undergraduate is what is exciting to you, right? What is interesting to you? And how can you take what you've been excited and interested about here at UC Merced and figure out a career that fosters that. And at the same time, you have to think about what you're good at. And, you know, that hopefully those things go together. Right? The things that you're interested in are also the things that you're good at. I'm interested in a great number of things that I'm very bad at. And so I have not pursued those things. Like, for instance, I was very interested in being a professional dancer, but I'm not a very good dancer. And so that turned out to not be a good career choice for me. It turns out I'm much better at political science and that was a good career choice for me. So you want to figure out the things that you are both interested in and excited about and that you excel at, that you're good at. Um, and that will help you to narrow down the kinds of careers that are of interest to you. But it's very important that you think sort of long term, right? So you think about where do I want to be in a couple of years? Where do I want to be in five years? Where do I want to be in 10 years? Is it important for me to stay in California? Is it important for me to live near my family? All of those things should be considerations for you when you are trying to figure out what kind of career you want to have. Right. Um, and then you need to talk to somebody. You need to try to find somebody who has some knowledge of that career path and then ask them how they got there. Right. And talking to people about how they got to where they are is a terrific learning mechanism. It helps you to understand what is it going to take in order for me to achieve that kind of position. Right. And, you know, some people are not going to be very introspective about how they got to their position, but a lot of people are pretty helpful and they can they can tell you how they got there. And a lot of the professors here and the staff here can connect you with people or help you to figure out where to go ask those questions. I found my internship when I was an undergraduate to be a terrific way for me to learn what I absolutely did not want to do. <laughs> so I thought I might want to be a lawyer when I was an undergraduate. And then for my internship when I was a junior, um, as a, I was a junior at Berkeley, no, a sophomore at Berkeley, sorry. Um, and I went and did an internship um, in Washington, D.C. with a, a, a program that was kind of like UCDC at the time. And I interned at the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission in Washington, D.C., which is a government organization that investigates and prosecutes um, evidence of discrimination in employment. And my job was to gather evidence for the attorneys that I was working with at the EEOC to help them investigate um, employment discrimination claims. And the work was really interesting. I learned so much about discrimination and employment law. And I also realized that I did not want to be a lawyer, like at all. <laughs> so that was very helpful, right? So um, doing, doing a little bit of something while you're an undergraduate can help open your eyes to what you what you do like and what you don't like. And it turns out when I graduated as an undergraduate, the thing that I loved most about being an undergraduate was asking questions and talking to people. You can tell I like to talk to people a lot. And when you're a professor, you talk to people all the time and you get to ask a lot of questions. And so it seemed like a good career for me. I appreciate your answer. Um, and that kind of concludes our panel. Unless any of our students have any questions, please feel free to put it in the chat box. Um, but any other final parting words from um, you, Professor, or Katia regarding um, political science in terms of like major degree requirements? 
I don't think so. We're going to be putting out a lot of information about our CAPE opportunities over the next year. Um, we just launched, and so that's why you haven't heard about it yet, because we don't have anything yet. But we will over the next year, 18 months, um, you'll be hearing a lot from us, and we hope that you'll take advantage of these CAPE opportunities. Awesome. And can they find that information? Is it on the main political science department website? It will be. <laughs> okay. Awesome. Thank you. <laughs> And then something I do want to mention. Um, so Professor Trouncy mentioned that students could receive credit for like internships or even doing research. So if you have any questions about how to go about that, like what's the form that you have to submit and how that will um, apply to your individual record, feel free to communicate with me. Um, you come in during our walk-in or virtual walk-in hours, make an appointment. Great, thank awesome. you. Thank you all for joining us today. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks.